I am a little bit concerned about all the rain. It's really hard to paint with watercolors outside when it's raining. What do you do when you plan a six day solo paintcation in the Great Smoky Mountains and it rains almost the whole week? During my recent trip to the Carolinas, if I wanted to log some outdoor brush miles, I had to get creative. In spite of the wet weather, I managed to do nine plein air paintings during the course of my trip. In this video, I'm taking you along on my travels and sharing some tips for how to deal with rainy seasons in your own art journey. It's always helpful to approach your travel plans with a mindset of resilience and flexibility, but let's face it, when you're a watercolor artist, rain is not your friend. The week prior to my trip, I kept checking my weather app and feeling this sinking sense of disappointment, especially as I realized that the forecast was most likely not going to improve. During the flight, I did some painting on the plane and listened to an audiobook called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. In this incredible book, which I highly recommend, the author, Vishen Lakiani, shares some epic life advice. One quote that stuck with me was, live life as though everything is rigged in your favor. This was something that I needed to hold on to, especially since it was so tempting to complain or become discouraged by the less than ideal painting weather. This positive mindset will do wonders. Maybe it won't change the weather for you, but it will help you perceive your experience as one of growth, accomplishment, and satisfaction no matter what. Been up since 4 a.m., but we made it. Here's my Airbnb. It's really nice. I think I'll be pretty comfortable here for the next couple nights. The same night I arrived in North Carolina, I immediately Googled nearby waterfall hikes. Well, I just got to North Carolina. It was a long travel day and I just have to get outside. There's about two hours of light left. It's been raining all week or all day and probably will be raining all week too, which is a bummer, but it's so gorgeous here. It's incredibly lush. I just can't even believe how green it is. There's literally vines growing on everything. I packed up my painting gear and an umbrella just in case and drove 20 minutes to a trailhead. I was determined to believe that this week was rigged in my favor, eager to stretch my legs after a long travel day and excited to paint something from life. Although it was very overcast and the ground was wet, the rain held off and I was able to start my week with a quick waterfall painting on location. Well, we got super lucky. It didn't rain I felt a lot of droplets on me and I had a couple even drop onto my painting which was a little scary but there it is the finished painting we need to celebrate those little victories I definitely felt satisfied and incredibly excited for the days to come my first full day in North Carolina was spent at the Biltmore estate Prior to the trip, I had envisioned hours spent outside in a wide-brimmed hat and sundress painting blissfully at the house and gardens, but it was completely overcast and there were rain squalls all throughout the day. I persisted in doing a quick painting, awkwardly sitting on a step and holding an umbrella while I worked. In spite of the sprinkles, it was a fun little warm-up and I wrapped it up just in time to escape the weather and head inside for the guided house tour. This was my second time enjoying a tour of the Biltmore, which was built by George Vanderbilt between 1889 and 1895. The house is 178,926 square feet of floor space, the largest privately owned house in America, and it's incredibly impressive to see. It's filled with treasures, including antique furniture imported from Europe, prints of engravings by Albrecht Durer, rare 16th century tapestries, original paintings by Renoir and Monet, and several large, breathtaking portraits by John Singer Sargent. After the house tour, the sun actually came out for a brief moment and I squeezed in one more super quick painting near the Rose Gardens before meeting up with Steve Mitchell of The Mind of Watercolor. Steve and I had been planning this collaboration for months and we were so nervous about plein air painting with the weather being so unpredictable, but to our great relief, we were able to paint together for over an hour beneath the wisteria vines and did not not get rained on. Steve has created a video all about this fun collaboration over on his channel. Head over there right after this to check it out. This was a day that actually went mostly as planned. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Sometimes when you're going through a rainy season, you will get those bright sunny days in between. Be encouraged. Days like these can propel you forward and serve as reminders that there is always hope and joyful moments can be found even if you know the days ahead might be harder. Have you ever gone through a rainy season in your artist's journey? Maybe you are experiencing a decline in your creativity, a lack of motivation, or maybe at the end of a long day, you just don't have any energy left for art. Here are some things you can do to bring back the sunshine in your creative life. Number one, be flexible with your plans. Life interruptions happen. Our plans can often go awry and there are circumstances that are out of our control. 
be willing to roll with it and instead of fixating on what might have been or what was lost, focus on how you can take the current situation and make the best of it. It's always good to set big goals. I'm a big fan of big goals, but don't be devastated when there are hiccups and bumps in the road towards those goals. One of my plans for this trip was to paint outdoors in downtown Greenville with Steve. Today I'm headed back to Steve Mitchell's in Greenville and we're gonna meet up in his town and hopefully paint together, but I am a little bit concerned about all the rain. It's really hard to paint with watercolors outside when it's raining, but you know what? We're artists, we can be flexible, we can be creative, so we'll come up with something fun to do. The day we had scheduled our plein air outing, it was a downpour most of the day. This, of course, compelled us to come up with a different plan. We ended up doing a lovely studio tour in Steve and Rita's home, going out to lunch, and I quickly realized that we were kindred spirits. What a gift to share such rich and meaningful conversation with this dear couple. Instead of painting outdoors, we ended up doing an incredibly fun collaboration in Steve's studio. You can watch that video here. Sometimes altered plans can be even better than what we had originally envisioned. By the way, check out Steve's channel. If you're not already subscribed to him, there is a link to his channel, The Mind of watercolor in the description below. Number two, take baby steps. Sometimes we inadvertently set ourselves up for failure by trying to do too much in relation to our current circumstances or skill set. So in some ways, I think all of this rain and sprinkling and precipitation has been good for me because I came out here setting a high standard for myself. I wanted to paint as many paintings as I could and because of the rain, and there's you know a chance that it could just start pouring at any minute, I'm a lot more limited as far as, you know, I can't just set up and paint just anywhere. I have to be somewhere covered. But you know, for now, I'm kind of just forced to enjoy being outside for the sake of being here and just really take in the smells, the sights, the sounds, and not be so concerned with performance, with painting, and with being as productive as possible, which is really good for me. I sometimes need these little resets and don't even realize it because burnout can creep up on you. I am thankful and grateful to be here and just so happy to be outside in this incredible place. Take stock of where you're at. Be realistic. Observe without judgment and just take small steps towards your artistic goals. To quote Vishen Lakiani once again, he says, epic things start with small, humble steps. Pay respect to your beginnings. And if you're just starting out, know that it's okay to be sucky, to be small, to be messy and chaotic. Just make sure to never stop dreaming. A very literal example of this from my trip is that when I realized that the rain would most likely be moving in and out every day, all week, I just packed up all my larger watercolor paper and put it away, and I pulled out only the small sheets and journals. When your time is limited, you must work small. You will still feel a strong sense of accomplishment when you can paint something small and bring it to a relatively finished state versus frantically trying to create larger paintings that will never meet your expectations given the limitations. Number three, practice gratitude. Another great quote from the Code of the Extraordinary Mind is, gratitude is the key to happiness. When gratitude is practiced regularly and from the heart, it leads to a richer, fuller, and more complete life. There were several moments during this trip where I found myself just thanking God. The only thing on my itinerary for the last half of the week was to explore the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but once again, the weather was chilly and rainy. Well, today I'm at my Airbnb in the little town of Silva. It's just south of the Great Smoky Mountains, and once again, it is pouring rain and has been raining all morning. So I had to decide what to do today. I don't really want to do anything extensive in the rain, like a long hike or anything like that. I just, I don't know, I'm not feeling not feeling like getting soaked today. So I am going to Bryson City and I'm going to ride the train today. I'm excited to find something that I can do that doesn't involve getting wet, but I can still see the scenery and enjoy the beauty of this place that I'm in. Just wrapping things up here at my Airbnb and we'll head over to Bryson City. I'm about to get on the railroad. This is gonna be super fun. I got to meet two lovely ladies at my table who shared stories of raising horses in Tennessee, and there was a singer-songwriter who entertained us with live music while we soaked up the beauty of lush greenery, rushing rivers, high tree-covered foothills, and the glorious Fontana Lake. 
During our one hour layover at the Nantahala River, I was so grateful to squeeze in one little painting. I found a dry spot with a chair that seemed to have been put there just for me. And although this subject matter was something that scares me and that I wouldn't normally choose, it ended up being one of my favorite paintings. Don't forget to breathe in the good things all around you and be grateful. Number four, choose to stay positive. For someone who's very task and goal driven like me, it would be so easy to allow my mindset to slip into negativity, especially when things that are out of my control are preventing me from achieving my goals. I planned this trip months ago and I did some research about the best time of year to come and visit North Carolina and June seemed to be just a great month for visiting just about anywhere. I'm trying to stay optimistic. I'm trying to figure out ways to be the most productive while I'm out here. This trip was meant for painting and for getting reference photos and for of course meeting up with another YouTuber and, and meeting up with Steve has been awesome. But the painting part, I just feel like I'm dodging rain all the time and it's getting a little bit frustrating frustrating and I'm feeling some anxiety over that, which I know I've got to just let that go. Sometimes your plans just don't work out and you can't expect to make plans months in advance and be assured that the weather's going to be perfect. It just doesn't work that way. So yeah, I'm trying to stay positive and I'm excited to see the Smoky Mountains. I looked up on Google, there's actually whole blog posts about good hikes to do even when it's raining. So I'm going to be out there no matter what. I'm going to persevere and I'm going to get outside and be in the weather whatever weather it is, unless it's lightning, then I'm going inside. <laughs> okay, that's the plan. Don't attach your happiness to your goals. Be happy before you attain them. You'll find attaining them much easier when you make the journey and not the destination the key to your happiness. Number five, most importantly, when you're going through a rainy season, just be persistent. I suppose during this trip, I could have thrown up my hands, decided it was a lost cause, and watched Netflix in my Airbnb all day. But that would have only brought unhappiness and a sense of failure. If I wanted to achieve my goal of hiking and painting in the Great Smoky Mountains, I was going to need to persist to make it happen, regardless of the weather. In order to paint the Tom Branch Falls from life, I had to sit on a damp wooden bench, holding my umbrella the entire time. I did the three waterfalls hike in rain and drizzle, but if I hadn't, I would have missed out on the beauty and grandeur of these stunning natural wonders and I would have forfeited the opportunity to practice painting moving water, something I want to get better at. During my last full day in North Carolina, I drove all the way up to the Tennessee side of the Smoky Mountains to do one of the park's most famous hikes, an 11 mile there and back beast of a hike on Alum Cave Trail up to Mount Conte. It was foggy and drizzling for nearly the entirety of the five hour excursion. I had all of my painting gear in my backpack, which I protected with a rain cover, and I doggedly hiked the trail, all the while looking for painting opportunities. So doing a long hike with all my painting gear definitely looks different than doing a short hike for a number of reasons. I'm still carrying all my stuff and on this hike I'm taking my actual easel just because everything is so wet and it's questionable whether I could even find a dry place to sit down. So I have to, well at least for me, I just kind of hustle to the top. I want to get to the top as fast as I can and then on my way down when I'm breathing a little easier. I can take my time a bit more because I've already done the hike, seen the thing, and this is just a there and back. So I get to see the same things on the way down, which is great. It's just been one of the coolest hikes I've ever been on. I'm almost four miles into my hike up to the top of this mountain on Alum Caves Trail. And I keep hearing the sound of running water and I have to pee so bad. <laughs> Fortunately, there is a lodge at the top of the mountain that has bathrooms. So I keep pushing myself, gotta just keep going and get there. The trail is too busy to stop and try to find a place to go. But that is just one of the things that goes along with long hikes. By the time I reached the top, it was pouring rain and impossible to see the mountains because of the fog. I only knew of one guaranteed dry spot on this hike, so I headed back down to Alum Cave Bluffs. There were definitely moments, especially when I slipped on wet rocks and my legs began to tire, when I genuinely felt angry and disappointed. So I tend to think I'm more graceful and sure-footed than I am, because <laughs> I totally fell again, slipped on another rock in front of another hiker. <laughs> <sighs> incurably clumsy, that's what I am. I tried to acknowledge these feelings and then move on from them. Dwelling on those negative emotions was not going to serve me in any way. I had to stay persistent and positive. 
When I reached Alum Cave, I set up my easel and painted the moody atmosphere created by the fog and marvelous layers of rock. Because the air was so humid, I had to adjust my painting style and spend more time waiting for layers to dry. I enjoyed listening to the other hikers laughing and conversing, and I just realized what a gift it was to be here, to have a strong body capable of carrying me to such beautiful places. By the late afternoon, the sun was finally coming out. I stopped at multiple overlooks to take pictures. At last, the fog had lifted and I could see all of the beautiful layers and distant mountains here in the Smokies. At the end of that day, I didn't feel ready for it to be over. In spite of my tired and wobbly legs, I did one more short hike up to Mingo Falls. It was the tallest waterfall I've ever seen, 120 feet high and utterly magnificent. The sun was peeking out of the clouds, casting brilliant spots of rainbow light across the crashing water. I set up my easel and did a painting, the most relaxed one so far. It takes a few days for me to warm up to painting from life, and of course, that's a lot harder when you're battling the elements the whole time. Finally, with the sun out, I could paint peacefully and without concern. It felt like a hard-earned reward for all of my effort and persistence. On the very last day before catching my flight back to Colorado, I found a quiet spot by a forest lake and did one final quick painting. Here are all the paintings from this trip, nine paintings, all small, but each one with a story, and each one taught me something unique, both about myself and about art. One final quote from the Code of the Extraordinary Mind. Extraordinary minds are motivated by a quest or calling, a drive to create some positive change in the world. The next time you find yourself going through a rainy season, remember that your calling, whatever that is, is bigger than these circumstances. You may have to adjust, be flexible, be small for a while, but if you can stay positive, practice gratitude, and be persistent, your sun will shine again. Happy painting, my friends. This is your journey. Enjoy every moment.